We're getting some more information about The Flash from director Andy Muschietti and the real reason why Michael Keaton's Batman retired that was actually not showed in the film. At least this is kind of Andy Muschietti's idea on what he wanted to show in the film, maybe in like a deleted scene. Let's get into this here. In a featurette, Muschietti clarified his vision for Tim Burton's Batman with a little background that gives a tragic character more of a taste of tragedy. Uh, that's not unheard of for the Cape Crusader, but the filmmaker stated his goal was, quote, to defy people's expectations of where Bruce Wayne would be. To achieve that, he imagined Bruce breaking his one rule. Muschietti said, I really wanted to defy people's expectations of where Bruce Wayne would be 30 years later, and I also wanted to deepen the backstory. If Bruce Wayne, as the story tells, has been retired for 25 years, what happened to him? I always said something should happen to Bruce Wayne to want to stop being Batman. Uh, and my idea was he did something that goes against his code and killed a criminal in front of the criminal's child. Not knowingly, but he still did it. Which is an exact mirroring situation of what happened to him when his parents were killed in front of him next to Monarch Theaters. And that created the monster that the Batman is. In the end, the consequence was one many of us fans could have predicted. Bruce couldn't live with crossing that line and hung up the cape for good. So this is what Muschietti says. He said, so he just couldn't cope with it. And that's why he decided to shut off his other side, Batman. And he hasn't been able to forgive himself. But the vigilante was presented with a plan to redemption as the director. And now the way we find him is a bit of like the evolution of that journey. You know, he's a tragic figure. He's basically a character that is in search of redemption, but eventually finds a way to do it by helping Barry. So if this sounds familiar, it sounds exactly what they did with Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi, except that they didn't actually have him murdering his nephew. They had him just attempting to murder him. Fortunately, I think it was a good idea that they cut this scene. I would not want to see Batman actually murdering someone. Uh, especially a criminal. Um, maybe uh, I think if there's a, a case where he's involved in a situation where like the, the, the like a, an assassin or a murderer or a criminal is going to kill someone else and he has, to, he has to kill them to stop them doing that, similar to what we saw in Zack Snyder's Man of Steel with Superman, with Zod, uh, I wouldn't be opposed to that. But if he's actually just kind of uh, got a guy hung up and kind of already beaten him and, and, and disarmed him and stopped him from doing whatever he's doing and then he murders him uh, in front of a child, I, I would find that absolutely abhorrent. That is not something that Batman would do. Batman is a very disciplined, controlled character. He is in control of his emotions. He would not let his emotions take control of him and be manipulated like that uh, into a crime of passion. Uh, so I, I do think that was this is a very good idea that they deleted this from the film, that this was not included. But this shows you this is what these Hollywood people are constantly thinking. They want to deconstruct these characters. They want them to break their rules. They want them to go out of character so that then they can then give them this redemption arc rather than ha having the character make the right choice in the very beginning. They want to break them down, uh, tear them down so that they are not kind of put up on this pedestal or whatever. And then they can have these like paths to redemption. And I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of the, I'm sick of this whole uh, kind of uh, trope. I feel like it's a trope at this point. Like, let's have these heroes make the right decisions and, and, and be examples on what is right and just as they are in the comics and as they should be depicted in the movies and what they use, how they used to depict them in the movies. Now they want to show you like, oh, these heroes, they make mistakes just like you and I, and they make absolutely awful mistakes that break their entire uh, code and their entire principles and everything like that. Uh, look how just absolutely terrible they are. But it's okay. We're going to give them a journey through this film where they can get to a path of redemption. Well, no, you've already destroyed the character. Uh, you've already destroyed this idea of that person being a character. And I'm not saying I'm not against redemption stories and everything like that. I love a re good redemption story. But there's certain characters you don't do redemption stories with. I think Batman's one of them. I think Superman's one of them as well. You just don't do redemption stories with those characters. Those are the characters that make the right decisions. They're the ones that stick to their guns. They stick to their principles. And, and yes, they do make those right decisions. Now, maybe sometimes they might make a bad decision when they're doing an, like an investigative case. A, a criminal has like maybe outwitted Batman, like Riddler's, Riddler's really kind of duped Batman or something like that. And, and, and that's a different thing, like where he makes a mistake on solving a riddle or something like that. Uh, and I'm fine with that. And I think that, that that's good. That shows that Batman isn't this perfect 
uh, character. Uh, and he has to figure out ways to overcome that. Maybe that's working with it, with someone else, collaborating with someone, uh, working with Alfred. Maybe that's looking at things from a different angle. Uh, maybe going back over the, the crime scene and seeing if he, he had missed something in the, in the first place and find something new. Uh, there's different ways that you can show a character kind of um, not being perfect without having them to destroy them like you would having Batman murder someone in front of a kid. Uh, just absolutely appalling that that is something that they even thought of. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of that trope and I'm sick of seeing that storytelling. And that's honestly why I don't really see a lot of these movies anymore because they telegraph that this is going to be happening to a lot of these heroes. And I'm just not interested in those types of stories anymore. But let me know what you think. What do you think? Do you, would you have wanted to see uh, Bruce Wayne, Batman, kill a, a criminal in front of his own child uh, and deconstruct the character like that and then go on to this path of redemption? Or are you kind of maybe where I'm at you don't want to see something like that. You'd rather see Batman make the right choice, lock the guy up, throw him in prison, and then maybe help the kid out um, uh, as he grows up so he doesn't follow the same path as his father. Or maybe there's some, some other um, um, path out there that, that, that you could see Batman taking in that situation. But let me know. Give me uh, Let me know. Share it in the comments. And if you like videos like this, hit that like and subscribe button. And make sure you hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any videos here at Bounding in the Comics. Subscribe for more.